This is water to water heat pump or we can say the vapor compression and refrigeration tester. In this water to water heat pump, the vapor compression refrigeration system is used or the concept of vapor compression refrigeration is used and this is nothing but the evaporator and this one is the condenser. In evaporator, water gets cooled down by refrigerant okay and in the condenser water gets heated condensing the refrigerant so here heat is taken from the water and heat is given to the water it is taken by the water and it is given to the water that's why it is called as it is also called as water to water heat pump here in the control panel you can see this is the voltmeter and ammeter reading means how much is the power supply given to the compressor so we can find out V I cos pi the total power input power given to the compressor this is the temperature indicator so there are in all total 7 different temperatures you can measure T1, T2, T3, T4, T5, T6 and T7 out of which T1, T2, T3 and T4 are the refrigerant temperatures whereas T5, T6 and T7 are the water temperatures. Here you can see this is the suction pressure of the compressor and this is the discharge pressure of the compressor. So here the refrigerant used is Freon or R12 and here you can see the suction pressure and discharge pressure of the refrigerant. The basic components of vapor compression refrigeration system are compressor, then condenser, expansion device which is at the back side and the evaporator. These are the four basic components are there for the vapor compression refrigeration system. In compressor, the refrigerant Freon used is get compressed, its pressure and temperature is increased. Then this high pressure, high temperature refrigerant is then sent to the condenser where with the help of water here we have a flowing water and this is the rotameter for measuring the flow rate of water to the condenser and this rotameter measures the flow rate of water to the evaporator so in condenser with the help of water the heat is given to the water water gets heated above atmospheric temperature and refrigerant get condensed, get converted from vapor form to the liquid form. Then this liquid refrigerant is then went to the expansion device, here capillary tube is used as an expansion device where it get expanded, its pressure and temperature decreases to the evaporator pressure and evaporator temperature. Then this low temperature refrigerant is flowing through these coils of the evaporator and there is a surrounding water. So this water will get cooled down by injecting heat to the evaporator or the refrigerant. Then this evaporator, vaporized form of the refrigerant is then again served by the compressor and again it gets compressed. This is how the refrigeration cycle is completed. And for water, the water inlet temperature to the condenser and water inlet temperature to the evaporator is same. Here you can see this is the inlet temperature T5. Then the water in the evaporator gets cooled down and this is the T6 temperature will measure at the outlet. Also the water flow rate is measured with the help of rotameter. Here this is the condenser, water inlet is same as that of the evaporator and this is the water outlet from the condenser. So here the water temperature increases. So by using M Cp delta T, M mass flow rate of the water, Cp specific heat of the water and delta T is the rising temperature of water in the condenser and delta T is the decreasing temperature of the water in the evaporator. By using this, we can find out how much heat is rejected in the condenser and how much heat is absorbed in the evaporator by the refrigerant. And this is how we can find out the refrigeration effect as well as COP, coefficient of performance of system. If we consider this as a refrigerant, then also we can find out COP of refrigeration as well as as this system also can be used as a heat pump because on one side we are heating the water also it can be also used as a heat pump and we can find out COP of heat pump also so here we will do this by two different methods theoretical measure by using the PHR as well as by uh, actual method 
by knowing the temperature, suction pressure, and discharge pressure, and actual power given to the compressor. By using this, we can find out the actual COP of the refrigerator as well as actual COP of the heat pump. In along with the PPTs, with the help of PPTs, I will explain you how to find out the COP of the refrigerator as well as COP of heat pump by using pH charts. Thank you.